One day, I was playing Watch Dogs 2 and got a notification that was something along the lines of, quote, high memory usage or something similar. Shortly thereafter, my game and entire PC froze and a still image of the game remained on the screen, but that was all. After that, the system would only power cycle and display the CPU and DRAM lights when powered on, see picture. Also, when I connected a USB keyboard, the keyboard would not power on. Since then, I have tried switching from DisplayPort to HDMI, different HDMI cables, different monitors, different power supply, different CPU. This caused a return to the power cycling issue, which I attributed to an out-of-date BIOS, but I have no way to fix that since the motherboard doesn't have BIOS flashback. This here is that viewer's broken gaming PC, and oh my, this one is a handful. I know at times viewer descriptions can be convoluted, you have to dissect to interpret what they're trying to say, what they're trying to tell you they've already done, and the issues they're experiencing. The gist of it for this rig is that he was playing a game, and all of a sudden he had a high memory usage warning, that resulted in a freeze, and since then the PC has not posted. Apparently he tried part swapping a few things, the power supply being one of them, though, to no avail, and I wouldn't have assumed a power supply swap would have fixed this anyway, just based on the symptom we read in the description. If the system's powering on, just not sending a picture to a monitor, not posting, that's usually not a power supply issue, though we have seen weirder. The other thing he tried swapping was the CPU. Now, the CPU he swapped to was a 5500, that's a Zen 3 chip, and the owner bought this system brand new, I believe, several years ago. He has never updated the BIOS. So it is possible that a CP swap will fix this. He just had no way of confirming that because the BIOS was not up to date. And so he didn't get a picture out, which is <laughs> that's kind of the original problem. We just created that same problem again by doing something else. That's if the CPU does fix this. But that at least gives us a nice starting point. I think I'm going to focus primarily on the CPU and motherboard area, just generally the platform. I don't believe the graphics card is to blame, though that would be a very quick check by itself. But I digress. I'm turning into Jay, slowly but surely. This should be a fun one, and I hope you'll stay with me. If you're planning your next PC build, then consider checking out our sponsor, VIP SCD Key. Their Windows 10 and 11 OEM keys sell for a fraction of retail and will unlock the full potential of your OS. They'll also remove those pesky activation watermarks. Click the links below to get started today and be sure to use our special offer code SKGS for a sweet discount on a variety of options, including Windows 10 and 11, Pro and Home, and more. Hey there, and welcome to Fix or Flop. If you're new, just know that everything you see us do in these videos is free of charge the owners in question, and that's thanks to your viewership. The fact that you watch is why we can do this for free. We don't charge for labor or hardware or any of that. And uh, I, I'm frankly surprised we've been able to do this for almost five full seasons. This is the final episode of season five of Fixer Flop. I, I thought maybe we'd get two, three seasons deep at most. So thank you so much for that support. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping we can end on a high note here. Hopefully we get this one fixed. It sounds doable. So we're going to turn this thing on and see if we can replicate the issue described by the owner. If I can figure out where the power button is. There we go. So I'm expecting it to power on, which it obviously has, and to not send a signal to a monitor. It's looking that way so far. So it, it actually sounds like the system has toned down a bit. Like the fan curves kicked in. It sounds like it's posted, to be honest with you. But it, we very clearly are not getting a signal to our display. So. First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try clearing the CMOS. I don't think that's going to fix anything. I just want to completely wipe the BIOS uh, in case we have any weird funky settings in there. Uh, and then we're going to try removing this graphics card and replacing it with a GT1030, one that I know works. I just want to rule the graphics card out right away because a lot of times when you don't get a picture like this, it comes down to the discrete card if one is involved. I'm just hoping that's not the case here. This is a very beefy RTX 2070 Super. And very quickly before I power this off, you can see the two debug lights that the owner mentioned are in fact lit. They are the CPU and the DRAM LEDs. An interesting combo there. I wonder if that is an indication that we're running maybe an incompatible BIOS or something. I don't believe we still have the 5500 in here. I'll have to check. We obviously know the owner did try a 5500 in here, but it's not clear if that was left in as like an upgrade or if the original chip was put back in. Now the easy way to clear the CMOS on this board is to jump these two pins next to the battery. We could also remove the battery itself, but I'm just going to jump these pins for about 10 to 20 seconds and give it another go. Again though, I don't expect this to do anything. Thing. Especially given the nature of the blue screen again, high memory usage, which seems a bit odd. This uh, isn't likely to to fix it. And while we're waiting for this to likely not post, I have quickly looked up the meaning behind the CPU and DRAM LEDs being illuminated at the same time on this particular ASRock X570 motherboard. Turns out it could either be an unsupported CPU, which means a simple BIOS update would fix this. If we have the original CPU in here though, I doubt that's going to fix it because it was working just fine prior and the BIOS hasn't been updated 
this entire time. Why would that be the issue? Uh, it could mean that the RAM is either not detected or compatible, which would mean that uh, maybe one of the modules is not seated properly. That'd be a quick check. Or it could mean that the CPU is outright dead. So here's what I think is going on. If the upgraded CPU, the 5500, is still in here, it likely just comes down to a simple BIOS update. That would mean, though, that the original CPU was the problem. And even if the original CPU is still in here, I still think it's the problem because if we were getting a memory limit error, like memory usage was too high, what I think happened in that moment was that the memory controller on that original CPU died. I don't think it could communicate with either DIMM. And as a result, the PC freaked out saying, oh, where's my memory? Where did it go? I think it's it's filled up. It has to be filled up because I can't access it anymore. When in reality, it, it's actually a, a CPU is just kind of gaslighting the software to thinking that uh, it is a memory issue. When in reality, it's likely not. And that's something we're going to check right away. Um, oh, you know what? Wow, <laughs> this might be an easier fix than I thought. Yeah, the memory is actually not seated properly. Live reaction. Uh, <laughs> bit silly, I didn't see this sooner. I was just about to remove this graphics card when I noticed that the right dim is actually sitting a bit higher than it should. In fact, if you look up top here, you can see that the furthest right tab is not actually uh, down all the way. And that's an indication that this DIMM is uh, not properly seated. So we're gonna fix that very quickly and then try powering on again. I, and this could very well fix it. I don't know why this would have just popped out in the middle of gaming. It seems a bit weird, maybe a separate issue. You see that there and that is more like it. You should hear, you should feel an audible click once these DIMMs are fully inserted. Could it really be that simple? Let's give it a shot. All right, power's up, no problem. I do still see both the CPU and the DRAM LEDs illuminated though, which is interesting. Yeah, doesn't look like we're gonna get a post still. Alrighty, so one problem fixed, another problem to go. And I was really hoping that would fix it. You can see the two debug LEDs are still illuminated. I also hope this module didn't kill anything else in the system. It's very unlikely, but I've seen weirder. I do think if the graphics card was to blame, we would at least see a VGA light on the motherboard, but a check like this takes literally seconds and it does rule out a very expensive component in the system. So let's try this with our trusty GT1030 that we know works. Looks like both CPU and DRM lights are still illuminated. That's what we expected. I think it's safe to say, since we were seeing the exact same symptom, before before and after that the original graphics card is okay. I've also tried a single known working stick of DDR4 from my own stash in every single DRAM slot to no avail. The two debug LEDs stay illuminated the entire time, so they're trying to tell us something different. So let's move on then to what we suspect is the root of the problem. The CPU here, this area, either the CPU is bad or we have a bad BIOS, maybe even a bad motherboard, not gonna rule that out. This is a Ryzen 7 3700X. Okay, so this is the older chip, the original chip where the uh, where the PC went bad uh, with that uh, blue screen of death. So I I'd actually prefer this to be in here because now we can tell for sure if the CP was in fact to blame. Cleaned it up a bit, but I don't see any bent or missing pins. Uh, at least physically, the chip seems fine. Same goes for the socket, nothing cracked, nothing clogging any of the pinholes. Could it be then that our suspicions are correct? Is this Ryzen 7 3700X to blame? There's only one way to find out. We're gonna swap it with a known working one. We'll check our handy dandy CPU drawer, and uh, oh, would you look at that? An exact replacement right at the front. I'm gonna quickly power the system on without a cooler just to uh, see if it posts. We don't need to have it on for that long. This is a really weird way of installing CPU. Uh, and uh, if this doesn't fix it, then the only other culprit I could think of would be the motherboard. I don't suspect this is the power supply issue. Again, it was already swapped according to the owner, but uh, the symptoms we're seeing just don't, they don't seem power supply related. Here we go. Again, this is only gonna be on for a few seconds. It's not gonna harm the, the CPU. They don't get that hot that fast. Just wanna see if we see the same debug LEDs and they are still on. We still have a CPU debug illuminated. We still have a DRAM debug illuminated. I, I guess the motherboard is to blame. I'm curious if the chip is getting hot. Chip is hot. So it is receiving power from the motherboard. A few moments later. <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, maybe I should connect DDR4. That would be important. I connected this fan thinking maybe the motherboard wasn't playing nice without a CPU fan connected. But uh, yeah, we, we just have bare slots there. That, that's uh, not what you want to see. Let's try this again with our known working dim. I like to 
keep original parts out of here that we've already swapped just to make sure that we don't have multiple issues. Like if I had his original memory still in here and that was also bad for some reason, then I could be misled by what we see next. So that's why I wanna keep stuff that I know works uh, in here, usually from my own stash, just to help rule out uh, multiple issues. Those are always difficult to troubleshoot. Uh, that's just my way of doing it. Let's see. Both debug lights are still on. <laughs> All right. So likely not memory related. Oh, is it? it is interesting actually that we're getting the exact same symptom with and without memory installed. I think we have a board issue. So perhaps the board is what's keeping the CPU from communicating with the DRAM. That could explain it. <laughs> Your guess is as good as mine. Now the closest board I have on hand to replace with his is actually a Gigabyte Aorus Elite AX V2. This is only a B550 chipset. And as most of you know, that is a slight downgrade from his X570 Steel Legend from ASRock. There are a few other things worth considering here though. I know we always get a few comments, oh Greg, you downgraded him. Oh, that's, you're doing him a disservice. We're doing this for free. First off, this would cost him money either way if he went somewhere else or did it himself. So we're gonna give him a board that still gives him pretty much all of the same features that this X570 does. You can still overclock with this. Uh, you can still overclock memory. You can use Wi-Fi. that's built in here. You have multiple M.2 slots. It also doesn't have the annoying X570 fan. So. I think that's a win actually. Uh, but the fact is this is here in the office. It'll get him back up and running as quickly as possible, which is important. Let's see what this does for us then. The only component from his original rig that is in this uh, little makeshift system is his original Ryzen 7 3700X. I'm going to jump the power pins. And we're not gonna actually see anything move because there's no fan at all with this rig. But I can tell you right away that the chip is getting hot and that we should be seeing a post momentarily. I hope we do. If we don't, then we have a dead CPU and a dead motherboard. Ah, there we go though. So that's a post. You can see there on camera, the glare is awful. Sorry about that. Go ahead and power this off again. We don't have a cooler attached. So good news. His CPU actually survived whatever happened in his rig, <laughs> which, uh, we see a lot of dead CPUs in this playlist. It's, I'm happy to report this one's actually working. At least it allows us to post, which is further than we got before. So I'm going to replace the original board and then we'll throw all of his other hardware back into the rig and cross our fingers. But first, very quickly, I'd like to address something that some of you might be screaming into your cell phones and monitors right now. Greg, why are you not checking the BIOS revision? We could have an incompatible BIOS here. We could have a corrupt BIOS. Don't write off the entire board simply because they're not playing nicely with the two chips you have here. And to that, I have a few points to make. Firstly, again, we've confirmed that the owner CPU works in a separate platform. In fact, actually his is the one in here now. And these chips work natively with all B550 and X570 motherboards. There's no BIOS I know of that strips support for Zen 2 because, well, these came out at the same time. They were made to work with each other. So that right there tells me we aren't dealing with a BIOS incompatibility. I've even gone so far as to check with a Ryzen 5 2600, still no post, Ryzen 7, I think it was a 1700, that didn't work either. There's no chip in existence that's going to work or play nicely anymore with this motherboard. Now, in the off chance the BIOS decided to randomly corrupt itself just out of nowhere, maybe it just exploded and internally, it just doesn't want to play nicely with anything anymore. I mean, we could try resoldering a replacement BIOS chip. Honestly, the easier thing for me would just be to replace the motherboard. It's, it's just uh, way more straightforward. I'm not as familiar with flashing BIOSes without a BIOS flashback function. By the way, this board doesn't support something like that. There's no BIOS flashback equivalent on the back of this board, which means we can't connect the USB drive and attempt to update the BIOS without a CPU installed. That can be very useful in cases where you don't already have a compatible chip on hand, but this board doesn't support that either. Funny enough though, his replacement motherboard does have this. If you're curious, it's called Q Flash Plus in Gigabyte's case. All that to say, it certainly doesn't smell like a BIOS issue. So we're gonna get this board replaced to get him back up and running ASAP. First things first, we gotta get this cooler transferred to the replacement. We'll sit like that there. Now going back in. Also, huge shout out to integrated rear IO shields. Also, I just have to ask, is this thermal paste? I think it, yep. It is. Yeah, it must have gotten there when the owner was swapping CPUs himself. Gonna get everything reconnected and we'll reinstall his original graphics card like that there. And that should be the last of it. It's still very messy, but I'm keen to try this as quickly as possible. I've kind of gambled a bit, just reassembled everything right off the cuff. We could have uh, added components one by one to this just to make sure we don't have any other failures, but I don't see how that could be just again, based on 
that main symptom. So uh, let's give it a shot. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's not good. Wow. <laughs> Why is it not powering on? The power strip is on. Oh, okay, there we go. That interesting delay. I'll make sure that's not repeatable before we give this back. So we are looking for a post. I expect we'll have one. I hope we'll have one. Come on. Come on. Give us something. Okay, sounds like it's power cycling, probably training memory. And there we go. That is our post. That's, uh, that's a huge relief. <laughs> okay, so all of his original stuff is in here. Just to recap, save the replacement motherboard. And that ultimately was what held us back. And after resetting TPM, we load straight into Windows. This is repeatable, by the way, at this point, I have power cycled several times. We load straight into Windows every single time, save the uh, recovery environment that loads every third odd or so uh, power cycle. So uh, this is great news. It's exactly what I wanted. I didn't see any M.2s in the motherboard. I think we're just running off of a two and a half inch SATA drive which is still fast enough today. You also have to remember this was an older system when it was first built, I think from CyberPower PCs. I'm not sure if it was upgraded along the way, but it's very likely this was the original storage drive that came with the machine. It is a shame that more can't be done for this original motherboard. Those two debug lights being on, I think that's just telling us that the board is completely bricked. It's obviously not a CPU issue. Uh, again, we discussed why it's likely not a BIOS issue uh, and it's not a DRAM issue. In fact, his original kit is back in the system without problems. I was even able to uh, enable DOCP there. So uh, it just looks like the board itself was the culprit. It just randomly decided to brick itself. Even stripping her down to a bare PCB, I'm just, I'm not seeing anything that suggests there was like a, a massive power spike, no burn marks or anything like that, especially around the VR MOSFET area. This is a uh... Just a, a very random fluke thing, it looks like. I do wish I had more to say about this, but the important thing is the system is back up and running, and that's thanks to that replacement Gigabyte Aorus Elite motherboard. I also wanna give Gigabyte a shout personally because uh, they send out every few months or so uh, just a huge stash of motherboards to use for this playlist and for builds, and it's just very convenient having replacement boards on hand for situations like this where yeah, uh, <laughs> other boards decide to just give up the ghost randomly. If you guys enjoyed this one, be sure to let me know by giving this one a thumbs up. That would be greatly appreciated. Consider subscribing if you have not already. Let me know in the comment section below what you thought of this one and be sure to stick around for the next one. Is there anything else I wanna plug? Check out our public Discord server, totally free to join. Plenty of uh, really great knowledgeable folks there that can help you if you have your own issues with rigs. Uh, please don't bother emailing us if you have like a random issue with a system and you don't live close to Florida. Uh, if you do live close to Florida, we have a form in the description that you can fill out uh, and we'll do our best to get to you as soon as possible. Okay, I think that's all for this one. My name's Greg. Thanks for learning with me.